nothing changes. Hey, what's up, rock stars? Welcome in to the channel. Uh, today is November 10th. It's Wednesday, 2021. Don't forget, tomorrow, Thursday, the 11th, uh, Veterans Day. The post office is closed. They will not be uh, running, so you don't have to ship uh, if you have one day handling or two or whatever. You don't have to ship tomorrow. So, uh, also uh, for you guys' enjoyment, I bought some uh, soundproofing panels. Sound proofing panels i will be putting all over the walls here in the office it'll make the sound better i'm gonna hook back up my yeti mic i've got uh the boom arm so it'll swing down here and i'll be able to talk out of it uh so the audio should uh see a bit of an improvement in the next uh week or so i should get these up in the next couple of days actually hopefully in the next uh two or three days so with that today's video you saw the title uh i have it over on my ipad uh 10 ways to get free inventory so i know a lot of you out there um, struggle with this, that you don't have a lot of capital or a lot of money to invest in eBay or Poshmark inventory. So how can you go about getting inventory for free or almost free? Well, without further ado, let's just jump into it. I'm going to cut, jump up, and put in these 10 top 10 ways to get absolutely free inventory to sell on eBay or Poshmark for free um, or any other platform, really. Hopefully some of these will help you. Uh, I don't recommend these for building a business into a full scalable business because a lot of this, uh, yeah, you guess you could scale it a little bit, but um, this is a way to build capital so you have more investment money to buy actual inventory with. So use this to start off with, but it's a way to get free inventory. So let's do it. So number one is as old as time. There is a website, it is called Craigslist. If you're not familiar with it, you've probably been under living under a rock for the last 15 or so years. Uh, you can go to Craigslist. They actually have a section and all during this video, I'll be popping up screenshots. Uh, my face may disappear and you may see what I'm talking about. So uh, just bear with me there. But uh, Craigslist, which you can probably see on the screen right now, has a completely free section. Now there is a lot of junk you will have to uh, make due time uh, sorting and scrolling through that. But there is a lot of stuff that pops up, especially if you're in a big city um, and you uh, have the opportunity to drive and get to it, you know, uh, all sorts of things that you can find in the Craigslist free section. So number one is old as time. I personally used it way back in the day when I really didn't have a lot of money, you know, 12, 13, 14 years ago. Uh, and I really uh, just saw stuff pop up on the free section and I would drive over and grab it. We actually got uh, from a business 10 or 12 free cubicle, free, full cubicle units that we were able to unscrew with a drill, take them apart, take them back to the garage we were storing stuff in, put them back together, and uh, we sold them for 100 bucks a piece. We made $1,000, $1,200, and we had them sold within a week. Uh, and every time somebody would want to come see one, we used the original photos from where they were set up. They'd come to get, say, hey, I want two of them. Hey, I want one of them, 100 bucks. We put it together, let them see it, and then if they wanted to haul it in the truck that way, or some people took it back apart and loaded it up. So free section, Craigslist, number one. All right, number two, be careful with the legalities. It is different in every city, state, municipality, but it's dumpster diving. So there's a lot of great YouTube videos about this. Uh, if it's legal where you are, if it's not locked up, if you're not um, you know, violating any laws or private property issues, again, you'll need to research that uh, state by state, city by city, and business by business, really, the property and the private property and whatnot, but there's a lot of places that you can do this. Um, dumpster diving, you know, people do it behind GameStop or behind Alta. Some of those videos were really big. They got millions of views, um, you know, and probably again, you're seeing some screenshots or video of this and Alta had, you know, unopened makeup that wasn't even expired video game posters behind GameStop and unopened games and controllers, just stuff that ended up in the dumpster. So now people making pretty good money off of a couple hundred bucks in a, in a night dumpster diving. So if you need a way to get some capital and you have the ability to do that in your area, per the laws, of course, then uh, it might be an option for you. Again, any one of these options could work, a uh, combination of them, but just make sure you're doing things on the up and up. Number three is the one we always recommend to people when they're starting an eBay business this way, you don't really have a lot of risk, if anything, is sell your own stuff that you have around your house. The average person has approximately 350 to $400 worth of material 
inventory merchandise laying around their house or in their closet, in their clothing, in their old electronics or whatever it is that they have. The average American has that amount of money that they can put up to sell on any given time at any given platform. So go around your house. Do you never play that old Wii system, you know, with 10 games and a bunch of controllers that you could maybe get 60 or $80 for? Do you have an old DVD VCR combo that is sitting in the closet you haven't turned on that might be worth 50 bucks? Do you have, you know, 10 dress shirts or dress neckties that you haven't worn in five, 10 years. Uh, a dress, you know, ladies, do you have a dress? You know, maybe you lost 20 or 30 pounds and you uh, got rid of all those dresses that are just too big for you anymore and you, you just hate to even look at them. And, you know, let's sell them off for, for 20 bucks a dress. You got 10 dresses, $200. Maybe you quit a job at a business thing to stay at home and now um, you have a bunch of dress slacks or blazers that you just don't wear anymore. Like they could be worth 30 bucks, 40 bucks. Put up all the items in your house that you don't use or don't need anymore, and it could definitely be a couple hundred dollars worth of starting capital. Okay, another really good one that people make a lot of YouTube videos about, it's kind of an expansion on the dumpster diving thing, but it's kind of more refined, I would guess you could call it. Uh, again, video or, or pictures that you'll see uh, popping up on the screen as I talk is driving around your neighborhood on trash night. Now, again, there's some laws about this. I know different cities and states have a rule about like if it hits the curb, uh, it's legally fair game. Some places say if it's in the trash can, you can't touch it. If it's next to the trash can, you can. Again, I can't give you advice or legal advice on that, but check your local laws and states and cities. Each one is different and make sure you're uh, abiding by those and not you know, violating private property or trash laws or uh, the property of the trash company or the county or whatever it is. But if you can find stuff, people find all kinds of good stuff. Uh, you know, People put it out on their street, on their curb as a curb alert or uh, free Computer desk, we don't need it anymore. Just somebody take it. And there can be some great, great items that you can find, uh, especially if you live in a nicer neighborhood or you live near some nicer neighborhoods. You can cruise through them if they're kind of bigger. Um, you know, the neighborhood I live in, people put stuff out uh, quite often. Um, we're not allowed because we have a strict HOA to really do that. But on trash night, they do allow you to have up to one bag or one box or one item uh, next to our trash cans. And so when you drive around on trash night around my neighborhood, you will see like a desk, a computer chair, like every single person puts like one thing out. I bet there's some people, I see it disappear too. If I leave early, I'll see it all gone the next day. And I'm like, man, somebody made a killing, made three, four, 500 bucks here tonight. So driving around trash night can be very, very profitable if you know what you're looking for and you know what you're doing and you follow the rules. All right, the next one is one that a lot of people kind of get embarrassed to do or don't think about, but call your friends, call your family, call everyone you're close with, uh, network, message with people on Facebook. You would be surprised if you go down the 25 or 30 people you are closest with, direct family, friends, mom, brother, sister, cousins, uh, best friends, etc., and you just say, hey, is there anything you'd like me to sell off? Remember, I just told you that the average person has three or $400 worth of stuff in their house. Imagine if you could call your mom, call your brother, call your sister, call your aunt, call your daughter, call whoever it is and say, hey, is there some stuff that you'd like to get rid of around your house? Like instead of donating it to Goodwill, like send it to me, I'll take it. Or hey, look, I'll sell it for you and I'll give you a couple bucks. Like, or I can buy it from you for a couple bucks. Give it to me for a week or two or a month and let me see if I can sell it for you and get you you know, some money, we can split it. That's a way for you to just get free inventory to list. And when it sells, you get paid. If it doesn't sell, no big deal. You can give it back to them or you can tell them like, hey, if you don't want it, I'll just keep it or, or whatever it is. You know, you can have all this stuff pot up and have a garage sale maybe and make yourself four or $500. So asking friends and family and people you're close with, uh, if they're willing to, you know, hand over some inventory or, or let you sell their stuff for some money and either split it with them or, or don't, you know, don't offer to split it with them right off the top. It is your friend and family, but you're doing all the work and tax liability. Tell them, look, if I sell it, I'll give you a few bucks. I'll let you know how much, you know, 25%, 30%. I'll do all the work. I'll handle everything and, and you'll just make some money off of it. So uh, that's a good uh, strategy also is contacting your close friends and family. All right, let's move into the second half, number six. And this goes along with number five. So I followed it up with number six, but it is different. And this is consignment. So number five is friends and family who might be willing to give you inventory or just let you sell it for them and make some money. Number six is actually consigning for people, acquaintances, business, uh, former coworkers, or people that you're maybe friends with or online friends with that you don't know very well, but they live close to you, or maybe they don't even live close to you. Uh, but consignment work can be really, really, really good. Like, hey, somebody, uh, you know, has a ton of clothes, like they're getting rid of all of their husband's old business suits and work clothes. They have 
hundred pieces and you're like, look, let me do everything. We'll consign it. We'll do 60, 40 because I'm doing the work or 70, 30. Uh, please don't do 50, 50 if you do consignment because you're taking all the risks. It's all your work, your account, your feedback, your taxable liability. Any of those sales are going to go on your taxable liability, your returns, your defects. It's all your stuff. You can't do 50, 50. I promise you it won't make sense. Do at least 60, 40, 70, 30 is better. Um, 65, 35, years, but something along those lines. Anyway, so actual peer consignment um, is really, really good and can be really profitable if you can hook up some contacts. Maybe you have somebody who just goes through purses and handbags like socks, right? And they're just like, every month they want to sell a few things. Get that person on board. Tell them, hey, look, I'll take care of all the stuff. I'll sell it for you. So consignment on number six can be really, really profitable and it's free inventory. You don't have to pay for it unless it sells. Uh, write up good consignment contracts. They're available online for free. You can Google it and make sure you come to an agreement on the uh, percentage and also 30 day uh, payouts uh, on delay, rolling payouts. So you don't sell something and pay somebody right away. It's 30 days and that gives you a chance to at least buffer the returns somewhat. And uh, in case there's any issues, then you are never behind uh, on paying them and never behind on you having money to reimburse yourself. So that's consignment number six. All right, number seven takes a little bit more work and a little bit more negotiating, convincing. Uh, if you live in a military area or near military bases, this can be really good. Or if you live in neighborhoods where it seems to have quite a bit of turnover, like big neighborhoods with three, four, five thousand 5,000 houses. My neighbor is pretty good size and it's gonna have 2,000 houses when it's done. We're probably at like 11 or 1,200 right now. Um, basically moving sales. So a lot of people have moving sales. You can find them on Craigslist and Facebook and local apps and all that stuff. Uh, but at the end of the sale, if they truly are moving, like let's say they're moving on Wednesday and they're having a sale all weekend long, uh, they can't take that stuff with them. They have to get rid of it. A lot of that will end up in the trash or if you can negotiate like, hey, look, if it comes down to it and you guys are getting ready to throw stuff in the trash, here's my business card, call me, I'll come get as much of it as I can from you. You know, Either maybe I can give you 10 or 15 bucks to take it all, or I can just take it all. If it's going to the garbage anyways, I'll go ahead and take it and take care of it. And that can be a way that you can get some free stuff uh, because they're gonna trash it anyways. Or you know that they're having a moving sale Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they're moving Tuesday or Wednesday. You know that that stuff's gonna end up on trash night, Monday night, right? So then you'll know exactly like, hey, are you guys gonna put a bunch of this crap out of the trash? please let me know and then I'll drive over and grab it, you know, before you throw it out to the curb and anyone else gets it. So that's kind of takes a little more work, a little more research, a little more negotiating, but it can be done and it is a way to get some free inventory. So moving sales, uh, going out of town, going out of business sales, all kind of that same thing. So keep an eye on that. All right, number eight, uh, you guys have seen them in the parking lots of probably every single Home Depot, Best Buy, whatever it is, Kmart, Target, Walmart. Uh, people buy those collection bins. So they're big, they're usually blue or green, they have like the handle, you pick it up, you throw your donations and you close it. So this one's gonna require some upfront money, but then you can get free merchandise beyond that. So if you're capable or have the ability to buy those bins, you can actually find them on Alibaba, you can find them on Amazon, I've seen them for sale on eBay, I've seen them for sale on websites, they're a little pricey depending on how big and how uh, fancy you get of a bin, but that standard blue bin, it kind of looks like a USPS bin. It's usually like plain blue. It's bigger. It's usually like five foot tall. It's usually like five foot wide by five foot or six foot or whatever. And it has that big dumping handle. Again, you'll see pictures. Um, they generally are anywhere from like five and six hundred dollars up to, you know, a thousand to fifteen hundred brand new. You can find them used, you know, cheap. But uh, if you can buy a few of those and get a few locations, convince some business owners to let you put them out there, you can roll in free inventory. Now, this is gonna take some work because you saw what we bought as fresh donations uh, from a thrift store. You never know what's gonna be inside of there, but it's all free. Whatever people donate in there is free. So my suggestion is get one of those in a better part of neighborhood uh, or a better part of town. I know this sounds terrible, but it's true. If you have a really uh, you know ritzy, rich neighborhood and just outside of the neighborhood, which where I used to live, there was this. Um, there was a Starbucks right on the corner entrance of this neighborhood that, you know, the houses started at six, seven hundred thousand and up, um, you know, into the millions of dollars. The people that lived in those houses would bring designer clothing bags and donate them into this bin. And the person that owned it, uh, you know, donated 10, 15 percent of all their sales to a charity, which was part of the reason they did this. They got, uh, you know, 501Cs and receipts. They slapped it all over this. They did really well. That person was making a lot of money, I promise you, even after the donations so, uh, and charitable uh, contributions. So that's an option. Again, it takes some money, but it can be done.
Okay, number nine, again, a little negotiation, uh, a little bit more research and work, but there are a lot of people that buy storage units and buy estate sales, or they are the estate sale companies. And one of the things you can do is ask them um, to buy them out cheap, or even better yet, if they're going to throw it in the trash, a lot of those just trashed up because when they have an estate sale, they have two or three days to really sell off material. And if they can't sell it off, then they try to get some bulk buyers to take as much as possible. Uh, and if not, they throw it away. So you should go to them and say, look, if you guys are actually to the point of putting this in a dumpster, please send me a message or call me and I'll ride down here and I'll take as much as I can and help you out with that. So uh, that's you know all about networking and making friends and getting to know the estate sale buyers and storage unit buyers, et cetera. So number nine, get to know these companies, these buyers, these people that handle that and give them your business card, meet them, text them, shake their hand and... Um, and get a, a, an agreement, get a relationship going with them to where they'll call you or message you when they have stuff that's headed to the dumpster. All right, the last one, number 10, is the actual storage units themselves. Not necessarily the buyers, but the actual managers of the storage units or managers of thrift stores or consignment shops. Again, all about networking and making uh, relationships and friends get business cards, get their t their cell phone number, give them your Instagram, give them whatever you want. These stores do get rid of stuff. And a lot of storage units, if they can't sell a storage unit, nobody buys it. It doesn't mean there's not anything good in it. It means that people didn't know what was in it and wouldn't pay for it. Or maybe it just got passed up on uh, because people were unsure, but there could be good stuff in it. They're going to throw that away. Uh, a lot of storage units don't want to take the time to sell it themselves. Some do, but most of them won't. And again, you could get these people to give you free merchandise because instead of having to fill up their dumpster or do the work, you just call and they'll say, hey, we got a five by five. It's full of stuff. Nobody bid on it. Nobody bought it. Uh, come get it now or it's going to the dumpster. And you show up and if you're clean, you're professional, you sweep it out, you do everything you're supposed to do. Um, they'll definitely, you know, give you deals. Or maybe next time they'll call you with a really good unit and be like, hey, look, just give us 50 bucks and come get it. Um, and that could be a really good uh, relationship and connection for you and network for you to get. So that is uh, number 10. That's 10 ways to get free inventory. Uh, again, any one of these could be a good supply, uh, but a combination of them could be better, or maybe one of them could end up being your full time. Uh, you have 10 estate sale companies that are calling you every week, giving you consignment, giving you free stuff. Uh, you have 20 friends and family. You could end up having more inventory coming into the, the process, into your building, into your house, into your garage, and your storage unit than you could even imagine handling. And this could be how you, uh, you know, blow up into a person who's just dabbling on eBay or Poshmark into somebody who's got a full grown business. So hopefully this helps you guys out. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, as always, use the comment section below. Have any of you used any of these methods uh, successfully? Have you gotten any inventory? Let, let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you guys got, how you got it, um, how much money you made off it, whatever you want to share, of course, as always. And uh, I appreciate that. If I could ask you guys one thing, just please hit that like button. It really helps the algorithm. It really uh, helps my channel and I appreciate it. And if you don't mind subscribing to the channel for future videos, hopefully one of them will help you. Maybe all of them, maybe some of them. Uh, but at any rate, if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of them and you won't miss any important information or updates that you might need. Thank you as always, guys. I will see you really, really soon. Have a wonderful night and talk to you later.